you have the Taliban who are coming out and, and just issued a formal uh, statement to Japan saying, look, we want you to come and uh, help uh, uh, pull out all of the um, natural resources that we have before China does it all. Say hello, Robert Kiyosaki. We have a special guest. I felt like I've known him all my life. It's like a brother. And we speak the same language, the language of gold and silver. But before we want to go into that, um, I want to let me talk a little bit about gold and silver. Uh, in 1964, when I was 17 years old, I held this little little quarter up. And I looked at it, and I said, there's something wrong with this quarter. And the, what, what was wrong with it? And what was wrong with it? It wasn't silver anymore. It was copper. And I didn't know at the time, but I was like 17 years old. You know, we learned nothing about money at school. And I didn't know I stumbled upon Gresham's Law. Gresham's Law states that when bad money enters a system, good money goes into hiding. And intuitively, I used to caddy to make money. I would take my money and convert my dollars. I got one dollar for nine holes. And I convert the dollars either into dimes or quarters. And I go through my pile and I pull out the real silver coins. And I had finally had a bag full of real, today it's called dirty silver. And uh, I didn't know, again, it's Gresham's Law. I just felt good about having real money. So I go off to school to, into school to New York, and I come back home, and my, my mother spent, spent my, quarter, my dimes and quarters, <laughs> which proves something. This is my nasty point of view today because we're at nasty times. Poor people don't know the difference between real money and fake money. It's a very big problem. And I'm, our government has had, has had fake money since 64, again in 71 when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. We've been operating on fake money. So today, if you look at it like this, so here's $1, and this is a silver uh, nickel, buffalo nickel. Today, it takes about 35 of these to buy one of these. And the more they print these things, the more it takes to get one of these things. This here is pure gold coin, U.S. Eagle, I believe. Now it takes 2,200 of these for one of these. And if you understand, there's two kinds of uh, investing. Fundamental, which is financial statements like this. This is fundamental investing. And then there's technical investing, which is the up and down, the trends and all this. If we don't stop our trends, we're bankrupt, we're final. You can't keep printing anymore. But there's another trend going on today, which involves our guest today, Andy Sheckman, like a, like a brother. Every time I need to know about silver or gold or this toilet paper, I call him. And Andy is Jewish. And today we have, we're at war in Israel with Hamas. We're also at war in the Ukraine with Russia. Germany is in serious financial trouble. And what they say about Germans, that they pick up a gun, they head to Poland. <laughs> That's another war going to go on over there. Plus, we have Taiwan and China. And the U.S. dollar, they keep printing these things. So we're paying for a war with fake these. So we're in serious, serious trouble, and today it's very important we pay attention to our money, our gold, silver, our education. So with that, Andy, uh, welcome to the Rich Dad Radio Show. And, Great to uh, see you, Robert. Thank you for the kind introduction. Always yeah, good to be here with you. Give us a little story about uh, Miles Franklin. and so I buy my gold and silver from Andy for full disclosure. Yeah, we, we've been in, this is our 33rd year in business. Uh, we've done $9 billion in sales without a customer complaint. And um, it's been a great run. It's, it's been very interesting over the last few years, the acceleration of events. And you just uh, enumerated several of them. But I think there is a growing awakening. And uh, what, what we pride ourselves on is reputation, because when you're buying a commodity, uh, a, a homogenous commodity. You you don't buy the commodity. You buy the company or the person. And we certainly uh, rely upon uh, our reputation and and our history, our track record. And 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 working with people like you uh, means the world to me. 
to everyone at Miles Franklin. And we're just, we're so proud to uh, have a relationship with you in any capacity. And uh, thank you for it and the trust. And uh, we do, we work very hard to uphold uh, trust from people like you and others uh, that we associate with every single day. But that's the lifeblood of our business. Right. And would you mind explaining this thing called there's no counterparty arrest to gold or yeah. silver, but there's counterparty arrest to this? You know, would it's you really, it's great that you say that, Robert, because as we see things unfolding in an environment where rising interest rates will put so much strain upon banks, upon corporations, upon the government, upon households to be able to service their debt. And if they can't service the debt, then there is a default. That being the whole, the whole issue with counterparty risk in an environment where interest rates are low and the economy is strong, we don't worry about counterparty risk. But certainly, I think it will be a buzzword that will catch um, fire as we move forward, where counterparty risk in the banks, with corporations, with the inability to service debt in a rising interest rate environment and in a slowing economy, I think it will become a very big deal. So gold and silver are assets that are not simultaneously someone else's liability. They hold no counterparty risk. The greatest risk you have is theft, I suppose. Uh, but I think you have a greater chance of being ripped off by the system right now than you do by a would-be burglar. So the counterparty to this is the U.S. government the U.S. Treasury, and the Federal Reserve Bank. Correct. Correct. And because they're, should I say, irresponsible, nice word. Yeah, to I'm say the least, uh, the irresponsibility I'm is off the charts. I mean, if you just look over just the last eight weeks, uh, the amount of debt that has increased just over the last over the last eight weeks is, is unbelievable. And, you know, you're talking about it. It took this... this uh, country hundreds and hundreds of years to uh, accumulate at uh, 209 years, let's say, to accumulate its first uh, 1.5 trillion in debt. It increased just since the, the, um, the debt ceiling was raised. We increased over 1.5 trillion. It took 209 years to do that before. And then here we are again, just over the next several last eight weeks or so, we've seen another massive increase in debt at 150 billion or something along those lines that, you know, again, it's take, we're, we're going through debt at, at or increasing our debt at such a rapid pace that it is not sustainable. And I think this is part of the reason we're seeing such a groundswell of support to, to de-dollarize across the globe. They realize we are at a pace of, of money creation and inflation that that's um, we just we can't we can't sustain it. But the point here is coming to a head, and that's the point. So people are listening. Oh, okay, I've heard this before. My point of view is like I said, in 1964, I picked this up, and now it's gotten worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's coming here. The point where this is about to become worthless, and then what happened in '74. You know, we went on to the petrodollar, and now we're at war in Hamas with with the oil oil rich countries, and it's getting spookier. And um, my concern here is this: every time Jay Powell, our our Fed chairman, raises interest rates, what happens to the stability or the counterparty of our banks? Every time they raise interest rates, this thing gets weaker. Am I correct? Absolutely. And, and it's getting to a point where as rates rise, banks are coming under further stress. And as more and more people run to take their money out of the banks, they have to sell their 10-year treasuries, which they're loaded up on. And as they sell treasuries, rates continue to go higher and higher and higher. It feeds upon itself. And look, just in the last two weeks, in the last two, last 18 days, the U.S. has added $444 billion in the last two weeks. And that would be an $11 trillion per year deficit. It took us until March of 1975 to accumulate our first $500 billion from the time we started the country. And now in the last two weeks, we've done $444 billion in increased debt. And as rates continue to rise, not only does it put greater strain on the system, but what really makes that dollar worth less is the continuing humming of the 
of the printing press. And as they continue to print more, the dollar becomes worth less. And as rates continue to rise, it becomes puts much more strain on a system that can't take it. And it, it feeds upon itself. This is a, a doom loop that unfortunately doesn't have a good outcome if you follow the math. So if I could add this, going back to what counterparty is, the money in the your money in whatever bank you have it in may be at risk. Huge. I just the last thing I heard was there's two hundred and seventy three banks that are on the FDIC watch list. So every time the Federal Reserve Bank, which is not federal, <laughs> it's not US, you know, it's well, not a bank. Yeah. I think wait, the wait, banks wait, are let me, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Every time they raise interest rates with the Treasury, this becomes more worth less. And what I've seen, Andy, is more and more people, like I started this whole program, my mother spent my real money. Poor people don't know real money from fake money. And that's what I'd like to drop a point of. We, we, you and I can go into the statistics and all this, but 99% of the people have been brainwashed into thinking this is money, safe as money in the bank. Do you, do you know what I mean? And now we're at the point where the counterparty are risk, our county parties are the Federal Reserve Bank, U.S. Treasury, and our government itself, and our banking system is now threatened. And the average person has no idea how close we are. You know that song where the edge of we had edge of disaster or something like that, edge of destruction. That's how. That's why counterparty risk. This thing is at risk. Your your family's well being is at risk. If you're in a bank, one of the 275 that are on watch by the FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and you're still telling your kids to save money, you're really obsolete is what I'm trying to say. You're like my mother who spent my silver. Poor people do not know what money is. That's the problem. Take off, take off from there, Andy. <laughs> yeah, well, I, one of the thing, one of the one of my favorite comments that I I borrow from you, give you credit. I mean, I think you got it from Bucky okay. Fuller. One, it, I I run with it. I think it's one of the best phrases of our time, and that is, people can't get out of the way of what they don't see coming. Uh, to me, this is a very very big deal, and at the at the same time, we have a record seventeen point one trillion in household debt, twelve trillion record in mortgages record 11.6 trillion in auto loans, 1.6 trillion in student debt, which by the way, is the US government's largest asset, and 1 trillion in credit card debt. So at a time when people don't see what's coming, they are not in position to be able to weather this storm that is bearing down upon us. So, and so that's why I started this whole thing with Hamas attacking Israel. You have China licking its shop over Taiwan. You have North Korea, very excited. Yeah, song, it, but what? How close are we, Andy? I mean, this is not funny anymore. Do you no, know what I mean? it's not funny, and it's interesting too. A couple of things, you know, the central banks have have been buying gold at a record pace, and this week, uh, Monday, today, when the market opened up in Shanghai, the spot price was a hundred and twelve dollars more per ounce in gold. world is doing what they can to de-dollarize and buy gold in the face of wars that are breaking out all over the place, ultimately that are going to weaken the dollar hegemony. Okay. So how, let's give a comparison because a lot of people, Andy, I mean, I talk to I'm blue in my face to people. They'd rather have toilet paper. They're so conditioned to it. They don't know where to buy gold or silver from and all this. So you just said, what's the premium on gold coming out of Shanghai, and what's the premium gold coming out of Miles Franklin? Once again, we do not this. We're not a investment show; we're an educational show. So please tell us. Well, again, we're just buy, talking the spot price. I, so I want to. Yeah, the spot just, price much, is if it's eighteen hundred and twenty dollars an ounce in the United States, it's nineteen hundred and thirty-five in China. That's how much more they're willing to pay. And I believe this will be a trend we will see continue for both gold and silver. 
where the big, big traders will arbitrage and all the gold and silver will flow east to the BRICS nations. Yes. Just so happens oh, to be... And we'll, we'll take a break, okay? I want people to understand that, that the gold is flowing eastward, westward. Absolutely. And it's another, thing that, it's another thing that Bucky Fuller said, that civilization goes in a northwest spiral. It's now going to China and India. India and China are sucking up gold and silver. And most Americans are like my mother. Oh, I got a dollar bill. Correct. That's exactly Good. right. When we come back, talking more about Andy, I'm doing my best to get people to stop saving this garbage here. We'll be right back. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Kiyosaki, co-host of the Rich Dad Radio Show. Robert and I have warned that 2023 was going to be a roller coaster of volatility. After all, the stock market is largely flat this year, except for a handful of tech companies. And other asset classes are struggling to meet expectations. One survey reveals that living paycheck to paycheck is the most common lifestyle in America, even for those making six-figure incomes. Combined with hundreds of thousands of layoffs in just the last few months, it's clear a financial storm is brewing. The question to ask yourself is, are you safe? For years, Robert and I and other investors have been putting more and more money into assets that can still climb when the stock market flatlines. One investment that doesn't seem to be affected by the ups and downs of the stock market is art. In fact, one of our close friends and advisor recommends art as his number one asset protection. Even more, contemporary art prices have outpaced the S&P 500's total return over the last 27 years by 136%. If you think art as an investment is something you want to pursue, then there is a vehicle that allows you to do that without investing millions, thanks to Masterworks, our longtime sponsor. Their platform lets you invest in shares of painting by icons like Picasso and Banksy. Masterworks now has 800 million in assets under management. But thanks to our friends at Masterworks, you can skip their wait list. Just click the link in the description for this episode. Offerings have sold out in minutes, but Rich Dad listeners can skip the wait list going to masterworks.art slash rich dad. That's masterworks.art slash rich dad. See important disclosures at masterworks.com slash cd. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Kiyosaki, co-host of the Rich Dad Radio Show. And I want to thank today's sponsor, our friends at Gold Alliance. You know, we should all be concerned about high inflation, a looming recession, the very troubled banking system, and out-of-control spending in Washington. And the fact is, during every major crisis in U.S. history, many of those who fail to prepare watch their savings, investments, and retirement funds plummet while others with the foresight to own gold help preserve their wealth and purchasing power. Now we're facing several major crises at once and we may soon face even more economic turmoil. So please don't wait, consider gold and put yourself on the road to financial peace of mind. The new free 2023 gold guide from our friends at Gold Alliance can show you how. Just visit www.freegoldguide.com forward slash Robert or call 1-800-473-4585. Republican governor and conservative commentator Mike Huckabee says Gold Alliance is the only gold provider he recommends to his friends and family. Please visit freegoldguide.com forward slash Robert or call now at 1-800-473-4585. Thank you. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait, access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Radio Show, good news and bad news about money. And today we may may know that um, Hamas attacked Israel or it's the other way around. Who knows anymore? But we're at war. Special guest today is a, a friend. Like I've known him for most of my life, but we just met. He's Andy Sheckman. He's my expert, my go-to guy. I have go-to guys on different subjects. Like I don't call Andy about my plumbing. 
Is that correct, Andy? <laughs> you know? Good thing you don't. But, I, but, what, but what I'm on know about gold, silver, and world affairs, he's a person I call. And my concern here is that so many people are stuck in old ideas. And I did a, I did a program into Germany three days ago, and I chewed this guy out. He read my book five years ago, and he's still trying to quote Rich Dad Poor Dad. He says, you say buy real estate, didn't you? I said, 30, 25 years ago. And what people don't realize in the last 25 years, they printed so much money since 2008. So they printed so much money. Real estate went into a bubble. Bonds went in. Sure. Well, and first, uh, it's important to note that the, the People's Bank of China purchased another 840,000 ounces of gold this uh, in August, which was increasing its holdings for the 11th straight month. And as we opened up Monday trading, uh, gold in China jumped to its second highest premium on record against the international benchmark. And it opened up at $112 more. That's just the spot price. Could you explain that, Andy? A lot of people don't know what spot and premium means and all that. So but the international is... price of gold, every morning there is a price that's set in London. It's called the daily fix, AM and PM fix, where a handful of big bankers say this is what gold should open at, which is a stupid, archaic way of doing it, but that's what's happening now until that system dies. And in China, they say, no, 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 we'll pay $112 more you got traders around the globe that arbitrage, meaning they buy in one exchange and sell on another for just a few cents difference to make that profit. Well, how about $112 more per ounce? So, okay, so, let, me, so let, me, let me dumb it down. This here is an ounce of gold. You sell this for how much today? Uh, the if well, I would sell that for let's say eighty, ninety, a hundred dollars over the Western spot price of gold, which right now, as we speak, is at sorry, that is at about eighteen hundred and fifty dollars. So call it nineteen fifty. So okay, so I say it takes about two thousand of these to buy one of these. Right. Right. And how much are the Chinese willing to so pay? In for China, that? if the premium was the same, the hundred dollar premium, they're their actual spot price is 1965, 115 over our 1850. Then you add the premium. So maybe they're 2065. They're over $100 an ounce more than we are in the West. And that signals how important gold is or just how, how much they don't believe in the Western price of gold and silver. And they think it's a scam. And this is their way, I think, of siphoning all of the world's gold and silver to the highest bidder and then they'll let the price run and the western system will just be obsolete so miles franklin here we go again this is silver how much is silver today at miles franklin again we're, we're in an educational program we're not saying buy or sell so a, a typical silver coin right now will cost you 25 dollars an ounce give or take depending upon what you're buying and and uh you know it's it's vastly, vastly undervalued. Now, they haven't really messed with the silver price in China the way they have the gold price. At least I'm not seeing reports of it. Nonetheless, it is being siphoned off of all of the world's exchanges at a rapid pace. The, the big industrial size bars are disappearing really, really rapidly, which is uh, of a big, big money taking possession off of the world's exchanges. So, so let me steal some silver from you today before India buys the rest of it. Right. So they bought 304 million ounces last year. That's more than is on the entire COMEX exchange system globally. It's yeah. a lot of silver they bought, more than the entire Western system has backing 
uh, uh, the, so the price much, discovery. How much will you sell me this silver coin for? Uh, right well, now, that's a buffalo round, probably about twenty three fifty or so. Yeah. And, and I'm old enough to remember when I was paying fifty dollars for this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So do you understand when for the last twenty five years I've been saying to people buy silver, buy silver, buy silver, because silver is used in every electronic vehicle, every solar plant panel. This is disappearing and this disappears in vaults. So would you mind explaining any of the usage differences between gold and silver? I, I always say silver is industrial as well as monetary. This is pure monetary. Yeah, what makes silver so unique is it has uh, uh, several different uses for it. I mean, like you mentioned uh, in terms of its, well, let's start with monetary. It, it's been money for 5,000 years. and. It's really experienced a monetary renaissance over the last three years or so as people have awoken to the value found in silver, an asset that is depleting in nature, yet is priced half of its 1980 peak. Okay, I agree with that. Then we have green and digital aspirations where you need silver for solar panels. You need silver for electric vehicles and battery-operated vehicles. You, you need silver for just about anything that conducts electricity, just about anything that is electronic. But one area that a lot of people kind of gloss by and maybe is the greatest demand for silver is military. There's nearly 500 ounces of silver in every Tomahawk cruise missile. And watch the awful news that you see uh, here with what's going on in Israel. And you see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these missiles going up in the air. Any of these sophisticated missiles with guidance systems have a, a copious amounts of silver in them. And so what's different about silver and gold specifically is not only is silver used in industrial and military applications, but when it's done, usually it's to the point where either it's used in such small quantities it doesn't make sense to recycle, or in the case of military applications, it blows up. So all of the silver used in industry, the majority of it, is not recycled. It's gone forever. So it's getting, it's getting more and more and more scarce. And we can see that in the geological numbers that, that really show silver is decreasing in nature at a rapid, rapid pace, so much so that the U.S. government came out just a few weeks ago and said that they believe by 2030 that all of the known mineable supplies will be exhausted. Now they haven't, to be fair, done much in exploration over the last several years because it's so cheap. Silver is so cheap, it does, it's not affordable to go and explore. But it's also important to note that silver is found in nature, like your skin is ep epi uh, epidermis. Silver is found in nature in a form called epithermal, very near the surface. So the big deposits have been found a long time ago. It might be, the best investment, most undervalued asset on the planet or the investment of a generation as it continues to be depleted and more and more uses continue to pop up every day. So let me, so let me give some more, just as vocabulary, financial literacy is vocabulary, okay? So this one is counterparty risk. Do you, which has more risk, the dollar or gold? Yeah, well, uh, the dollar, the value of a dollar is the ability of the Federal Reserve to make good on its value. Gold has no counterparty risk. So absolutely, right. gold and silver would be the one that has less risk and no counterparty risk than right. a dollar that is losing value globally. Yeah. And one more thing is called country risk. Country yeah, risk means that most of the gold and silver has been found in countries that are nice to us. You know, and where they haven't explored yet are places like they're shooting at each other. Because I used to I used to be in mining. I mine I Took a gold mine public, two mine gold mines public, and a silver mine public. And well, it's, it's nice very interesting that you said that, and I'm glad that you said that because we just see now a you have the Taliban who are coming out and and just issued a formal uh, statement to Japan saying, "Look, we want you to come and uh, help uh, uh, pull out all of the um, natural resources that we have before China does it all." They just were interviewed in Japan. And you have the Taliban after we spent all those years there, all that money, all those deaths. And the way we left Afghanistan, you and I have talked about in a humiliating fashion, set the stage for where we are right now. But now we leave, Taliban takes control again, 
and they're trying to tell the rest of the world, hey, you know, China and Japan, hey, we have tons of natural resources. Come and exploit them. Come and pull them out of the ground for us. We'll work out a deal. This is exactly what we what you're saying. And, and there are a lot of places around the globe, like all the rare earth metals, the majority of them are found in Ind Indonesia and in China. So a lot of this stuff we haven't thought out very well. And uh, this is, as Zoltan Pozar calls it, a new system. He calls it Bretton Woods 3 that will be dominated by commodities, real things, not dead instruments and IOUs like that dollar in your hand is. So the point here is this is called country risk. Yes. And the country risk goes up the more the world hates us. Like being a military, I went to military school. Um, they, they said whoever controls uh, Afghanistan controls the world. Well, that was a long, long biblical prediction on that one. And now the Taliban control it. Now they're attacking, Hamas is attacking. We have the BRICS, and people still want to hang on to this garbage. Let me please expand on that for one moment. You know, people don't understand why the world hates us. I'll paint a quick picture, real quick. So we invaded Iraq in 2003, and they would think it was illegal. We have 90, last year alone, last year, uh, I, I, uh, Iran, excuse me, Iraq, their oil uh, uh, proceeds from, from selling oil, came to $90 billion. And all of that money is held in a reserve account at the Federal Reserve. And so we, they can't even access the money that they make for accessing their natural resources. So they asked the um, Federal Reserve just a few weeks ago for an extra $1 billion in, in cash from their oil sale proceeds. And it's the their Treasury money. turned them down. Treasury said it's no. It's their money. It's, yep, can't do it. So Iraq wait, just- wait, Andy. They're asking for their money. Their own money. That's right. We just want $1 billion of the 90 that we that you're holding from just last year alone. They said no. So Iraq just announced that they will fully make um, trading in dollars illegal by January 21st, or January 1st, 2024. That's it. No more trading in dollars. Illegal. And this is a country we supposedly liberated, but we're holding all of their money from their oil revenues and won't give it to them while we're sanctioning a third of their banks for trading with Iranian banks because they wanted to have natural gas to, to cool their homes in the middle of 120 degree blistering heat. So it, that's why countries hate us. It's that type of, of coercion and bullying that is setting the stage for this expansion in the BRICS territories. So if you had a crystal ball, we have about two minutes left. <clears throat> you know, in, in this fundamental trading, which is a financial state, there's technicals. And, you know, like I said, I was buying silver when it was $50 an ounce and it came down. So I'm, I'm bagging it at 25. I think I'm, I think I died and went to heaven. You know, I just love it. So if that's coming on, but if we don't change the direction of this war everywhere and printing money everywhere, what's going to happen? What do you, I mean, how long can we keep this up, Andy? How long can people keep taking this piece of garbage here that we print at will. I don't think much longer at all. I mean, look, it just in this year alone, the BRICS countries have offloaded $123 billion in U.S. treasuries. China Jeez. and Brazil and India, the United Arab Emirates, all of our, our, our supposed allies of the past, well, minus China, although we had a good relationship with them for a long time, they're dumping the bonds. And and there are countries that are, are working very hard to strike deals with one another outside the dollar. And as we continue to print at a pace that is unsustainable, while rates are going higher, we are putting such strain on the entire system. The whole system is going to be dragged down. And maybe that's what they're intending to do. But maybe that's why and it's not just the wealthiest traders in the world, that being the central banks, it's the most sophisticated and well-informed continue to buy gold at a pace that the world has never seen over the last 18 months, more than they have ever seen. And every month it's bigger than the last. They know what's coming. And this is a very big deal and it must be done methodically, not too quick to cut off your nose to spite your face, but there will come a point and I call it logarithmic decay. Little by little by little by little by little, then bang, all at once. It's like going over the falls. 
Well, we're seeing the little by little by little by little by little. Every interview that you and I have done, we've talked more about the little by little by little by little by little. Where are we in this logarithmic decay where we hit the falls? Don't know, but we will hit that. And I think that's what you're so good at showing people is the little by little by little by little. And when the all at once comes, when none of us know when it probably on a Sunday night, if you're not prepared, not just with gold and silver in every way, I think um, it, it's going to be a very, uh, let's call it a religious experience and, and one that I don't think will be very pleasant for the majority of the people who don't see what's coming and therefore have not and cannot get out of the way. Last, real last question, about 30 seconds. What's CBDC going to do when the Fed goes to the Fed coin? What happens then? Well, I think in order to get to the CBDC, you have to create an event. And that event could be the loss of the petrodollar and everyone dumping dollars, which creates hyperinflation as the dollars hit our shores and inflation goes straight up and interest rates go straight up to compensate, not controlled by the Fed, but by the market and everything collapses. But have no fear. Lil Brainerd and her central bank digital currency, the number two economic advisor to the U.S. Uh, White House, modern Goodbye. monetary theorist who, who ran point on Fed now and also worked with MIT in establishing the CBDC. Uh, I think you will create an event where people will beg for it because they will have watched the banking system implode. CBDCs will be the end of privacy and will be the ability for the Federal Reserve to create both monetary and fiscal policy right to the end user. And it's what they want, and it is coming. And the Bank of International Settlements said every country must have an operational one by 2025. It's coming. And I think that's another thing to be prepared for. Get out of the okay. matrix. Own things that have no counterparty risk, like yeah. gold and silver. That's, that's why I own this. This is silver and gold. Because yeah, there'll come a time where, where they'll say, you got 90 days to turn this in. And if you don't, it's worthless. And right. now you get your new CBDC. When does that happen? Don't know. How does it happen? I don't know. But they will have an event that makes people want to take it. Because the majority of the people that I talk to and listen to you, they don't want to take it unless they have no choice. And that event, right. the banking system blowing up, everything blowing up here, will make you whole. Just sign on the dotted line. That's like the logarithmic test is getting closer and closer and closer. And people still want to say this. Right. Just like my poor mom. Right. Anyway, thank you very much. I like this because this here is untraceable. I can spend it. It's been money for 5,000 years. So it's this. I can go anywhere in the world and spend it. That's right. Anyway, Andy, thank you. No one I respect more, Robert. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm always a phone call away as, as this crazy world unfolds. And if you have any questions, please check out milesfranklin.com for information. Right, so this is Robert Kiyosaki of the Rich Dad Radio Show. Once again, we make no recommendations of what to buy. We're purely educational, but these are exciting times, and these are the times we've been waiting for. Thank you, and buy some gold when it's gold. Thank you. Be well. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.